नेक्स्ट अब प्रिपेयर फॉर एन एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिन जर्नी एज वी एम्बार्क ऑन आर मोस्ट अवेटेड टेक स्पीकर सीरीज इंट्रोड्यूसिंग आर फर्स्ट टेक ल्यूमिनरी हुसैन दाहिर अ सीजन बेटर एन इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ हैकिंग हु फॉर्मली बिलीव दैट हैकिंग इज एन आर्ट फॉर्म एज द चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर ऑफ वेब इम्यूनिफाई हुसैन हैज डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड हिज प्रोवेस बाय सबमिटिंग मोर देन थाउजेंड वॉलिटीज थ्रू बग बाउंटी प्लेटफॉर्म्स गार्नरिंग अ प्लेथोरा ऑफ अवार्ड्स successfully conquering a wide array of challenges beyond his exceptional hacking expertise hussein also finds solace in the art of travel and the tranquility of the african tropical sea join me in welcoming hussein dahe a remarkable individual who seamlessly combines the artistry of hacking with the beauty of leisure so last year we've done a technical tour and this year we are going to Focus on something else. We're going to speak about the life as a bug bounty hacker, bug bounty hunter. So when a hacker walks into a room, there is also always this sense of mystery that he brings with him. And I know that every one of us here has his own story for why he started hacking, why he started doing bug bounties, why he started doing uh, cybersecurity. But I want to share today my story with you and try to get. Uh, Explain to you my motivations for why I started hacking, and giving you some explanations and tips to help you with your journey. So, how did I start hacking? Around um, 10 or 12 years ago, I was playing some game on Steam with some friends I met online, and <clears throat> it's like. You don't know someone. You just meet him on the internet, and you start playing games together. And so someday he told me, "Listen, there is a new game, <clears throat> and it will be good if we could play it together. But for that, I will have to help you install it on your computer." So I was like, "Okay, no worries." I gave him access to my computer remotely with some programs like Team Viewer. And uh, little did I know, next day I was a star on YouTube. The guy just hacked my computer, installed the virus while while I was um, while I gave him the access to my computer remotely, and uh, hacked me. Took some pictures, took my uh, files, took my Facebook account, started sending some messages to my family members. So this is where principally my will to start hacking came. So. Uh, we'll go again to talk about um, what it made of me today. So I'm Richard Derci of Web Unify. I've won a couple awards at big bounty events. I've also participated in some uh, big bounty along the way. A lot of vulnerabilities found. A lot of companies got hacked. I've done a lot of collaboration with other hackers, like chefs here. And other hackers, which uh, I enjoyed hacking with along the way. So we are going to speak today without slides. We are going to try to connect with you directly, and let's speak about bug bounty hacking in general and what brings us here all together in the same. When I started bug bounty back in the days in 2014, it was like something magical happened to me. I did not know why it was why there was something like this that existed that I did not know about, and how it happened. My first bounty ever was in 2014, in the first year. It was from Facebook, and I remember that when I got an email saying you got uh, rewarded $500, dollars, I was just so 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 extremely happy. I did not know if it was true, if it was a scam. Uh, you don't know what's exactly behind uh, where the thing happening because you don't understand that as a young age, at a young age, you can just find vulnerabilities on some programs and start getting money out of nowhere. So obviously, your parents start saying, "What are you doing on the internet? Is this uh, legit? Is this not a scam? Did you get it from someone else? Is it something you have to pay back?" So. People don't understand, and you are still young and trying to figure it out yourself. And you find yourself entering into this world of big bounties and bounties at a young age. And this is where you 
have to have some self-control over the time to not make mistakes over other people have made. So uh, when we speak about back bounties, in my experience, um, I want to speak from my experience. When I started back bounty and started earning some money from back bounty programs, I was maybe 14 or a little older or younger. And uh, we come from a very modest family, very modest, uh, financially speaking family, and my bounty has basically changed my life and the life of my family. Because I believe that when uh, families are bonded together, nothing can happen to them. And so if you can help today, the next day someone's going to help you too with uh, whatever you are sharing together in your home. But uh, Black Bounty came to my life at a point where I needed to start making money, even though I was young, because you start looking at your parents and start understanding that they are suffering to get you to school, to get you to universities, to pay for awards, to pay for medications, to pay for a lot of things, and you start thinking that, oops, if I can do it myself, it will be a relief for them and for myself to know that I'm doing it on my own, even though it's a young age and you might not have um, have the duty to start doing it yourself. But, so we started my bounty, got my first bounty from Facebook, $500, and I was really excited. And I remember at the time, I didn't have the age yet to get a bank account. So my first challenge was not getting the bounty, even though after sending a lot of reports which got deprecated or not accepted at that, my first challenge in my bounty was getting my bounty delivered to me, because I didn't have the age to have any bank account. So uh, back in the time, I was on Facebook, there was this Facebook group called Black Bounty Community. I think it was one of the first back in, uh, in the days, maybe. 2014, 2015, and there was this uh, friend, this guy, because he was not a friend yet, and I just messaged him, you know, you are 15 years old, you speak to other people, you don't know people yet, you just open to the world more, and I just said, okay, I got a bounty from Facebook, but the problem is that I don't have a bank account. Would you be able to get the money to your account, and then you send it to me back? And the guy says yes. And uh, it was funny because you don't know this person, I've never met him, it's just your first bounty ever, you're just so excited to get it so you can uh, enjoy it. And then the guy says, yes, I can do it, here's my bank details, just send it to Facebook, let them send the bounty on this uh, specific uh, bank uh, account. So what happens is that I take that specific bank account, I send it to Facebook, and one or two days later, Facebook says, uh, okay, it's sent, so we wait one week for it to arrive to his bank account. And we chat uh, with that, uh, exactly that friend. And after some days, you know, when the bounty was, was to arrive to his account, the guy disconnects, you know? <laughs> Nothing more, no more contact, no more thing, send a message on Facebook, no blue tick, nothing. The guy disappeared from Facebook. And I was like, okay, I got scammed with that guy. But little did I know, one week later, this guy came back online and he says, sorry, I was out of electricity because I live in some really far um, places where electricity is not um, always available. In fact, he was from India and this guy actually sent me my money and I got my first bounty because of him. So I thank him, even though he's not here, that's how I got my first ever bounty from Facebook. So when we speak about uh, bounties and the life, the lifestyle that the hacker can have, because the bounty has allowed us to do a lot of things, let it be financial freedom, let it be f uh, timing, because now once you are a third bug bounty hunter, you have the ability to hack when you want, where you want, Whenever you want, you don't have to tell to anyone, okay, I'm online, I'm not online. You don't have to give any kind of um, uh, account to anyone. So you just do what you like and when you like it. But there is a lot of mistakes which we make when we start and when we uh, do back bounties, which I want to speak about 
and try to give you some part of my story from it. So as Jeff said uh, in his talk, collaboration is really important when you do collaboration with other hackers. But you have to know who you are collaborating with. Because if you just trust anyone, uh, you might learn it uh, on your own. So there is two ways to learn it. You either learn it the hard way, or you learn it the very hard way. Either you will learn the hard way, or the very hard way. In my experience, 99% of the persons, they, learn, they will learn it the very hard way. So I've learned it the, hard, the very hard way. So you just find someone, start collaborating with him, give him some uh, endpoints, give him some domains, give him some access to your accounts maybe, so that he can send the reports. And this guy starts sending the reports on his own, without you included. One week later, you see that that asset, specific asset is down. So you don't understand what's happening. This asset was online for 10 years. Now I just sent it to this guy and it's down. So you don't know what's happening. That's because you can't trust any, <clears throat> anybody uh, without knowing him for some time and knowing that he's a good person. So thankfully, uh, I've had some bad experiences with um, this kind of thing and collaboration. But I finally met some people which I always collaborate with. I always spend time hacking with them. And I have no issues ever, 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 ever with these guys. And I can say that I made more, more money with these people that I have ever made and without seeing them. So imagine you are in some part of the world and you make money with someone that's another part of the world and you never met. You don't know this person, even maybe you haven't sp spoken on any call ever. You just texting, okay, this is the end point, this is availability, try to exploit, let's do it. And you make more money with these persons than persons you know for years in your real life, like your real friends. So this is crazy because it builds some really good bonding with people, it builds some really um, good um, characteristics uh, with other people because Obviously, it's really hard nowadays to get this kind of bond with, with uh, other persons. Even if you know some person in real life, it's not always the same thing that you get when you hack with someone and get too closer to someone. So, another thing is, uh, I want to talk about what technically hacking is for me. When we talk about hacking, most of the people think about computers, think about um, systems, think about vulnerabilities. But I think that hacking in itself is a way of thinking. It's not just, just only related to computers, related to web assets, related to vulnerabilities. But it's mostly the way of thinking, trying to always get the, a way to do what you want to achieve. So you might uh, be a hacker in other different um, places, not necessarily hacking computers, not necessarily hacking web targets, not necessarily hacking um, mobile phones or anything like that, but it's a way of thinking. Now, uh, this, this way of thinking leads us to uh, thinking a lot, because I know that most hackers overthink a lot, have um, a lot of moments where they love being alone, loneliness, they love being alone because that's where they feel like they're, they are the most, uh, they're the most connected with themselves when there is no people around them, no sound around them, no lights maybe, just a computer screen and a dream. And what's interesting about that is that when you meet people like you, you, you know that you are not crazy. So you understand that you are not the only one doing this kind of stuff. You are not the only one that loves spending too much time alone. You are not the only one that can spend maybe 10 hours straight in front of your computer speaking to a terminal with a, a green font. So you just start realizing that there is a lot of people like you and you are a lot similar in a lot of things. So when I started uh, doing bug bounties for a couple of years. I have done 
full-time by bounty for maybe six or seven years. Now I'm not in a, anymore doing by bounties full-time. But uh, when I was doing by bounty full-time, I was going too hard. And I know that a lot of people do the same mistake, going too hard into it, spending too much time in front of computers without taking rest, without taking some other activities, doing other things than hacking. So I, I used to spend maybe 15, 16 hours per day in front of the computer trying to hack, trying to find vulnerabilities on companies, trying to prove to myself that I can hack this company and prove to my friends that I can uh, get bounties from these companies. And the, the principal effect of that is burnout. After a couple of months, you just felt, feel burned out. You don't know why, you don't know where, you don't know how it happened, but the reasons are here. You don't want to hack, but you are forcing yourself to hacking just because you are wired that, that way. If you are not doing hacking, you are not doing anything else. If you are not pursuing some bounties, you are not having fun. If you are not getting that, st that uh, little peak of happiness when you find some vulnerabilities, you are not any more happy with them. Um, anything else. So it's like uh, it's, it's, it's like a shot of adre adrenaline that you start getting when finding bugs that you are always going to pursue again and again and again and uh, even when you don't feel like it you just sit there trying to find bugs or to spend time on the computer. And it most of the time ends badly because you haven't had the time to do anything else, you are only doing the same thing. But after a couple of time, I understood that you all should always, always, always hack when you feel like it, and not when you feel like you have duties to get bounties, to get some stuff, but always hack when you feel like it and not force yourself to hacking, because when you force yourself, you are just forcing your mind to thinking a lot, and maybe your mind is not uh, really concentrated enough to think about anything else. Sometimes we have to take some rest, travel a bit, change, um, change some places, change some uh, habitudes that you have, change, see other people, see friends, and do other stuff than hacking. So uh, I want to talk about something that's important to me too because I've realized that, that a lot of people don't pay attention to bounties when there are any bounties. So, we are getting bounties nowadays from companies and we are enjoying it, right? But who of you knows how much time this is going to last? Who knows? How many years is this going to last by going to find max and get paid for it? You can't know. It might stop in a year. You don't know what happens. It might stop in two, ten years. You don't know what's happening. And uh, when I started, I made this mistake that all my bounties I was spending. It, uh, I was spending my bounties without really thinking about the future. And now, after a couple of years, when you look back and you start thinking, okay, uh, it's been like five years of working. I haven't saved anything. I'm spending other money and I'm not taking care of uh, my future. Even though you have made a lot of money along the way, but still you have spent it on, you start realizing that there is an issue. And I tell you when this happens, this starts happening when you go on vacations for one month or uh, two weeks, and you start thinking, oops, if I don't hack right now, I'm not going to pay, get paid this month. So you are just thinking like, if I'm not doing bug bounty constantly, I'm not having any input of money coming uh, into my accounts. So you are being uh, attached to bug bounties in general. However, bug bounty is like a very, very, very uh, sensible part because you, you don't know what happens. There's chances of duplicates. You have chances of programs not liking your reports. You have chances of um, being out of school, you have a lot of chances. You don't know the bounty is 100% going to get to your account. There's a lot of different aspects of it. But once you realize that uh, you have to take care of what you are earning and your bounties and you, that you have to have a plan for the future for 10 years from now, because obviously I don't think that everyone can last 
more than 20 years in the cybersecurity company, uh, in the cybersecurity field, sorry. I think that it's really hard for anyone to keep doing bug bounties for 20 years, 25 years. So it might be uh, really, really good to start thinking about what you want to do in the future with any bounty that you might be earning right now. So uh, hacking brings us to another point where when you meet a lot of people from, from the community, this gives you chances to go wide on other kind of, um, kind of other places, not only hacking. So you might meet someone today that's from some spe specific uh, community that does some specific work, and you are able to just work with them in the future because you've met them through hacking. And when you already have that bond of um, connection with these people, it's always easier for it to take to go to another place because you are already connected with these people, you know these people, you have done work and job and businesses with them through bug bounty in, in the past, and uh, it's easier for you to connect and try to adapt with these people. Let's talk about consistency in bug bounties. Uh, so most of the time when someone messages me or talk with me, he goes like, okay, I have tried everything on this program, but I'm not finding any bug. So the first question is, how much time have you spent hiking on this specific target? And most of the time the response that I get is two days, three days, maybe one week at most. So this is not enough because you should know that you, you need to spend at least one month on a target to think that you really know it perfectly and that you are spending uh, some quality time with that program. Because uh, in one day or one to two days or two, three days or one week, you can't know exactly how a program uh, works. You don't know about how a program is structured. You can't know the technologies a program is using. You don't know a lot of things you are not knowing anything about it. So it's not like two days and or three days and you're done and you, you would know about all these things. We need to spend at least one month on these um, programs so that we can get the max uh, output of, uh, out of them. I remember uh, seven months ago, we decided to go and try to find some bugs on FIS on the code, the bank program. And when we came in and started hacking on this specific program, the program had around 1,000 uh, vulnerabilities resolved. And at this point, you just think that, oops, this is going to be too hard for me because this is a public program, everyone's hacking on it, everyone's spending time hacking on it, and it will be impossible to find some bugs. And uh, of course, my first 10 bugs went uh, duplicates and out of soup, unfortunately, but kept going and try to uh, have persistency and after two or three months of hacking on it finally was able to find some bugs and now i think that i still hold the first um, top one on that program in, in a time span of maybe three months so uh, consistency is always going to beat anything else when you spend much time trying to understand your target which, when you spend a lot of time trying to know how things are wired, you have more chances to find bugs because you know what you're talking about, you know the programs, you know the technologies, you know how things work, you know how things are connected. So, uh, bug bounty has changed my life in a lot of ways, in, in a lot of different parts of, um, of my of casual life. Through Bug Bounty, I've been able to travel a lot. Through Bug Bounty, I've been able to meet a lot of great people. Through Bug Bounty, I've been able to launch Wabi Munify, which is a fantastic company. Through Bug Bounty, I have been able to open other kind of um, businesses outside of the field for a backup plan if anything happens to cybersecurity. So uh, I'm really grateful to that journey that I've had. I'm really grateful to be here. And I would like to thank you all for uh, being here today and uh, listening to my talk. Thank you. For leaving, I'd like to know if there is any questions. Yes.
Sorry? How AI is changing the world of technology, right? So I think that AI is, might be able to find some vulnerabilities in source codes. By if you supply some source code, it might be able to find the vulnerabilities. But there will still be the business logic errors which can be found unless you have some humans thinking about this might be that way and this might be that way. And if I can do that, maybe it's not intended. So I think that um, there's still room to go. AI is not going to take over any soon. Maybe some kind of vulnerabilities might be um, taken over, but most of them will still be uh, something equivalent for us. Is there any questions? Yes? Here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Hello. How did you deal like with big scope acquisition like fees? How did I? How did you deal with big scope acquisition like yeah. fees? Yeah. So that's a question that you come back to every time and, and then. So on big scopes, mostly what is going to give you more chances of winning is having good reconnaissance game. Because the more your attack surface is big, the more you can hit. And if you find some hidden assets which someone hasn't yet found, likely going to find some bugs which uh, other people don't, haven't found. So what I usually do with that, I'm going to hard recon for a couple of weeks, maybe months, reconning, brute forcing again and again subdomains, um, v holes, trying to get some um, paths that are unique, looking into JavaScript files. So when it comes to big scopes, the, the big key is trying to spend a lot of time doing recon before getting into the target. And be sure, being sure that the bugs are going to get the, the assets you are going to get are not found by many people before. Okay, one more question. Uh, few days ago, I uh, report a P1 bug on fees uh, in their acquisition. They accept, they say this is their acquisition, but they didn't uh, maintain this domain. In this case, uh, what can I do? So the, the sum is very low. Can we hire it? I mean, Few days ago, I make a report uh, on fees P1 part, but uh, they say this is their acquisition, but they didn't maintain this domain. Oh, so if they don't own this domain, right? They own this domain, but they didn't maintain this domain right now. They just maintain this domain. Yeah. So, did it get accepted or not? They didn't accept it. Why? I don't know. They say this is uh, my, our acquisition, but right now we did not maintain this domain. So they are not maintaining this domain. Right. So maybe it was it out of scope? No. It wasn't out of scope. So I think your best guess would be messaging per codes to support channel and trying to get them to review your bugs because if it's in scope, I think that you should get rewarded for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yes? So if I'm working on a target, yes. So I will be exploring the, the domain itself, trying to understand the JavaScript, trying to understand the business of the website, trying to read the documentation. I, I, I always spend time trying to understand my application more than anything else. So once I know that I understand what's the purpose of the application and what every functionality is used for, then at this point I can start hacking because I have more knowledge around this specific thing. But if you don't know your target, it doesn't make sense to hack on it, right? If you don't know a car, you can't drive it. 
So it's kind of the same for me. So I would spend much time trying to understand how the application works. Let it be documentation, let it be some YouTube video explaining how the product works, let it be anything, some blogs explaining how it works. Just spend time looking at how it works. So this, this gets us back to Recon, which uh, there is a lot of um, methods to do in Recon. There is a lot of different ways to do it Recon. Because each of us, maybe I might have some ways of mine to do Recon. Uh, Ayub would have some other ways to, to, to do Recon. Chefs will have some ways to do recon. Our work will have his own way to do recon. I think these are techniques that you you develop on your own, like with the time. Even though maybe I, I can show you how I do it, it might not make sense for you. It, you might think that this is too complicated or this is not so good. So what I would suggest is that you just I've made a talk with Naham Seth that is on YouTube where I talk about recon a lot. It's like one hour something long. I think that uh, there is also a lot of other videos which are available for recon. If you don't, just take the time to watch them all, take some notes, and then start doing it yourself and try to adapt to what works best for you. Because my techniques might not be relevant for you at all. And your techniques might not be relevant for me. Same thing with everyone else. It's just how you like doing it, then you will do it and it will work for you. But there is some kind of specific pace that is common to everyone, like talking and stuff. And so this is like some stuff that are common. So I am Adi Dagan. I'm in 11th standard right now. I have approximately submitted 60 bucks up till now. So some days before I submitted above on Spotify, each week I hear about. So they are constantly telling me that they need some more info. I have already uh, sent them three video POCs and uh, two times I have sent them, uh, sent them pure written demonstration. So what can we do now? Can you repeat the last part please? Uh, I have submitted three P video POCs to them up till now. Yeah. And four times I have submitted a pure written description of the bug and the, all the steps to reproduce. They constantly are telling me that they need some more info, more info. What can we do now? Yeah, so if you can get more info, I think it's done. But I think that there is always ways to get more information, uh, uh, more impact on the bug, right? It is all, uh, it is fully exploited. No? It is fully exploited. Nothing can be done more than that. So if you are sure that it's uh, all good and that it's the maximum impact, I think you should reach the support team of either let it be hacker one per code and have them help you towards that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I have last question? Yeah, we'll take uh, one last person. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, my question is how do we first Akamai web sites for Like, do you have any uh, idea? Like, the always block or like, how do you go for computations or what method sites? So are you asking how how do we bypass that? I mean, well, this needs a, a talk on its own. So there is a lot of ways to get rich in IPs. So the, I think that what you, you should spend is try to develop those techniques so trying to find rich IPs. So let me give you an example, a pretty simple example of that. Let's say, for example, you have Yahoo, which is behind Akame, for example. So what I would do is that I would go on some uh, websites and try to get all the ASNs owned by Yahoo. I would take all of it. I would enumerate all the IPs inside all the uh, ranges, IP ranges. I would request uh, the, the, the IPs. I would send a request. And I would compare the titles with titles of the website I'm looking for the origin IP of. So there is a lot of techniques which um, can be covered to try to bypass Akami, Akami swap. But uh, I think that trying to find the original IP makes more sense than trying to bypass the WAF actually, or the payloads that are blocked. So uh, you are trying to say like you, you find origin IPs so that it, uh, there is no WAF over there, right? Yeah. So what uh, I will do is that I will take all the IPs owned by the specific company. I will try to request them and get the titles. 
and then I would search if there is any title that uh, matches. But like, uh, when, if we have the original IP, it's actually behind the load balancer or something, and there's a reverse proxy running over it. So we have to do virtual loss enumeration over there to bypass it. I, am I right or wrong? Yeah. Okay, okay. So there is no clear way to first Akamai where for these things like that. Yeah. Like there is no a pretty straightforward way to, you know, first website which are using WAF like Akamai because Akamai is a big issue like I have seen. No, it's not straightforward. <laughs> there is yeah. always some work implicated in that. So basically, uh, in your case, you actually try to find the IPs and contact the vendors who owns those IPs. So too. yeah, take the IPs, request all, get titles, try to find a title, a title that matches the title of, of the, the main site. Okay. Yeah, but of course you have to take the IPs of the company, you know, so that you can match yeah, things. the IP range. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm going to pass uh, the place to another one. Thank you. Thank you, Hussein, for uh, describing in simple language how the life of the hacker looks.